So if you want to ask her to do it. Thank you. First of all, um, we're on live. Your, your reaction to, to the verdict. Can I take this off? Sure. Okay. Um, well, we are allowing ourselves to feel a moment of relief and a little bit of celebration over the power of the people. We know that the millions of people who rose up all around the globe after George Floyd's life was stolen, that the reason that Derek Chauvin was tried and now convicted is because of our activism. And so we want to uplift that it's not only about a conviction for Derek Chauvin, but an entire uh, rotten system of policing. Right? Your, your T-shirt and a lot of the T-shirts here say defund the police, and Christine and Alex and I were talking about that. What, what does that exactly mean to you? It means that we need to stop feeding a system, the same system that stole the life of George Floyd, that stole the lives of people like Riddell Jones and Ezell Ford and Waikisha Wilson here in Los Angeles. Stop feeding that system and invest those dollars, the people's dollars, in the things that actually make communities safe, housing and health care and good jobs and those kinds of things. So that's why we're in front of Garcetti's house, because he continues to feed a rotten system system of policing. One of your followers here uh, had a, the t-shirt that said abolish the police. Would you go that far? You know, I would go that far. We have to remember that abolition means two things. It means upending unjust systems. The system of policing that hails from slave catching is absolutely unjust. And abolish the police and replace them with, with what, if anything? The second side of abolition is building what it is we want. So it means investing deeply in communities. It means remembering that black people are, um, our communities are safest when they're well resourced. So abolishing the police means enabling us to invest those dollars in the things that actually keep us safe. And would there be a police force in that scenario? Well, when, when we talk about abolition, um, it's also coupled with a reimagining, a recognition that intervention workers, right, um, like Second Call, intervention organizations like the Reverence Project are much more effective in building safe communities than our police. And so that's okay. what we want. Have you um, ever sat down one-on-one -on -one with Mayor Garcetti? Mayor Garcetti won't meet with us or Black Lives Matter or People's Budget LA. We've been requesting meetings for more than a year. What about with Sheriff Villanueva or Police Chief Moore? Sheriff Villanueva and Chief Moore, we see them on the Oversight Commission meetings. We know who they are. They're entrenched in an unjust and murderous system. And we have nothing to say until they say that they're ready to resign. So this is your message to Chief Moore and to Sheriff Villanueva right now. It would be what? It would be that they should be ashamed of themselves, that Michael Moore should be ashamed of himself for the way that he's enabled police brutality. Um, Sheriff Villanueva should be ashamed of himself for attempting to exploit the very real pain of crime victims today. Um, and we're saying that they are, their days are numbered, that we you are... think all law enforcement officers are bad? I think that they're part of a corrupt system. That can't be saved. You're Policing is an irredeemable institution and has to be replaced with community driven solutions. Have you ever considered running for public office yourself? I prefer to stand outside and share ideas and not be beholden to organizations like police associations that bribe and bully elected officials.